Welcome to another demo from MicroRooster. Today's topic will be bubbles, bubble graphs, grids, and interactive uh, bubble widgets. So I'm going to go into my environment, use a simple data set. We use this data set for heat maps. So let's reuse it, take a look at it quickly. Two attributes, category, subcategory, we have a few metrics, okay? Now obviously we can simply run this and graph it. Let's see the graph view. This Let's go down to the bubble. And as you see, you have a simple bubble graph. Obviously, this is not sophisticated. We don't have all the elements that we need. We could, we could always come here and start adjusting things. Or we can simply go back to the grid view. And we can play with it. Let's say, let's remove subcategory from the grid. Do something simple. Let's add year here and let's go back to graph mode. Alright, so our bubble chart is now having a little bit more uh, meaning to it. Each color presents a different year of units sold. These, this is the number count and this is right here the profit and then the revenue is determining the size of this box. We're not sure we want the box or not. We can always go to the graph options, display legends, etc. You might want to replace this with actual bubble and maybe give it a more size and apply. So now it's a circle. And obviously when you hover over, I'm not going to get much in. So let's just save this, save as. Okay, so I'm just going to save it as a graph. Great, let's close this. Now I'm going to take us to the web, which is where most of your design needs to be when it comes to these kind of widgets. So we can run this, and as we saw, it's simple. It's got all the basics that we wanted, and we designed in the grid, and we can continue customizing and designing. But notice here, there's an op opportunity for us to do something more with it with the custom visualization. If you don't have custom visualization enabled, Go to your preferences or ask your ad admin to do this for you. It depends on what you're allowed. Go to project defaults. If you have access to the project default. If you don't have your admin do it for you, scroll all the way to the bottom and make sure this is enabled. Once you enable it, you might have to log out and log back in. Once you got that in place, this uh, you can do something more with this. Let's go to the tools and let's do something more let me enable custom visualization and I'm going to select the bubble grid All right, and you can set it up what does it do when you have an iPad or an Android because not all widgets will alright let's see and there we go so now it's doing the years and it's doing the category and it's doing the revenue for the color uh, you can switch the numbers around and it's doing the size for the units uh, for the units sold so obviously you see you might not see everything you want you just go back to your you know your grid and you start moving things around and you might start you know getting what you want you might have wanted to do something where the year and the category might have been on top and maybe you wanted the units sold there not to be part of it you want to just buy profit and revenue rerun and now we have each category and each uh, year in a now I'm going to show you the next step which is interactive graphs let's go let's go to this heat map dashboard that we created but let's just make it more general widget map or widget dash okay to do is I'm going to edit this in desktop you could do this in web as well but I'm just going to make it quick and easy I want to create a new layout and I'm going to drag this widget and I'm going to right click on this go to my properties I'm going to select a widget. I'm going to select the 
interactive bubble graph okay so this is not the same as the bubble grid this is the interactive bubble graph okay and it works in flash and DHTML perfect okay let's just do one more thing let's add another report I'm just gonna keep this as a grid done great save and close to web my shared and here's my dashboard let me run my dashboard and see what happens all right great so I have my bubble graph because I chose that grid and I have this graph that I this grid that I selected at the bottom so what do we have we have a revenue metric a unit sold at the bottom and this is the default setting it depends on the order of your item so what the first first on the x-axis the second metric on the y-axis and the size unlike the grid the bubble grid it's not showing the attributes and the x and the y it's showing the metrics on the x and the y so this is a little bit different this shows you relative information for uh, for one series at a time or multiple series the other one was showing you either across time or across categories and here if you hover over you will see the first metric which was revenue the second one was unit cost unit sold and the profit okay and each size depends on the profit in this case which is the fir third metric you can switch things around you can make this the unit sold and this the revenue and then the profit becomes the size one thing you notice that it says books here but you have multiple categories we can change that if we go into our let's just go to the interactive alright so we have different categories different subcategories and then these items right here but let's bring in the year and I'm gonna bring it in from the objects here we go the year I'm just gonna drag it and put it right here now I'm going to go and run it and see if anything changed. All right, so I, I put the year in front. So now the year is the, the uh, changing dimension uh, rather than the category. And each category is sitting here somewhere. So if you hover over them, you'll see subcategory and category. But again, this might not be clear enough for you. You could probably go back. And we can try to drag category on top. Go back to our design, our flash. All right, so this might make more sense because now our categories are colored separately and we still have the size showing the profit. And then the next step would be, how do we customize this? Well, let's right click and play with it a little bit. Let's look at the properties, the legend whether inside or outside. I don't like the legend being inside. It just clutters things unless you have to. I, I like the bubble radius. Now we enable time series and you can hide the controls or show the controls. And if they're hiding, they'll be toggled and I'll talk to, about them in a second. So let's give it a few colors. Crazy here, just orange. And let's keep the control size at large, but you can shrink it and then you can control the font okay also gonna control the drilling and I'll show you why what the drilling allows you to do so I'm gonna highlight that and then keep them connected and this is if you have a selector and we'll come to that in a second alright three units in the row axis great so it's telling us what the problem is it didn't like what we did here we're gonna do that we wanted them in the row axis so we can enable the drilling because the drilling tries to find a father child relationship so when we enable drilling it needed us to explicitly show the drill path and here is the the year time series if you notice we have three years of data and they're moving across okay but because we had to reorganize things, we might have lost some of the function that, that we liked, which was the category showing. We can bring that back. And now each bubble 
is we're presenting a separate category. But the question is, we enable drilling. What did that do for us? Well, besides the fact that each category now moves on its own through time and shows us the improvement and the relative size for, of the profit, you can also double click. And now it shows us the subcategories. Okay? So now we have multiple subcategories associated. And if we do, we want to hide the subcategories of this electronics category, just click again. And now it's back here. Now, even when you have it expanded, you can still use your time series, but it'll be at the subcategory level for those expanded categories. Okay? So that's one thing. Another thing is you can zoom. Let's say you want to focus on these. You can hold the mouse. So I'm holding it with the left button and I'm dragging the square and then zoom and there you go now you're focused on just those two areas and again you can do the expansion collapse and time series okay and when you're done with all these you know things you want to bring it back to the original you can just refresh and come back and then you can double click on whatever and you're back to your original size talk about briefly selectors and I said okay what does it mean to have a selector? Okay. Well, at this point, it doesn't mean much, but let me show you how it does play a role. If we go back here, and I'm gonna allow the user, when hovering or selecting a category, to use it as a selector for another, another area, such as this right here. So again, click here, and. Look at this. See what is it called? MicroStrategy. Let's just name it MicroStrategy Rooster Target. Okay. So this way, when I do control it from here, I know which one is being targeted, and it's right here. If I'm not happy with the automatic det detection, I just put it back to manual, and I can select the one that I want manually and I have a few more options that I can control okay so there we go and now let's render it back in flash or interactive and see what happens right so now not only do I have the capability to drill but also when I'm at the category level and now when, when I hover over any one of them notice that the bottom one changes this is books movies music and here and it keeps and it sticks to the last one that I have so now we enabled it to also be used as a selector and simply by hovering over to make things down if you don't like the hover over you can just remove that last option from selector and say scatter plot if you want them all to have the same size meaning you make it two dimension rather than three you just you know, and then you give the radius size. So it looked currently, let's just do 30. And now all the, the, all the bubbles have the same size, okay? So you still have that capability, but you're no, you're no more focused on the third dimension of, or the size dimension. All of them have a constant radius. And you could ref just by bringing back or taking it this off, okay? If you want to inherit graph board properties, See, it says in here, graph formatting, it's not allowing me. The reason it's not allowing me is because here it's a grid. But if I click here, convert this into view mode of a graph view. And now, let's just say, uh, let's format this and background, for instance. Let's see, what can we do? We can fill it. Say so fill it with something that's if you need to be super customized. Again, not everybody might have those kind of requirements, but if you do, you know, as you change colors here, you can have the control. You lose some of the nice, you know, pre built sizes and fonts. Now you're forced to use the fonts and sizes that you have in the design or in the editable mode. So you have to now go and control all the sizes separately and make sure everything is showing. But you know, if you're satisfied with MicroStrategy default, then you don't inherit and you get the defaults out of the box and it's, it kind of resizes in a better way to fit your model. Thank you very much and uh, 
See you in another video.